Thank you for having me this evening. Uh, school librarians really have their hands on two different worlds, the world of education and the world of librarianship. On the one hand, they're dealing with curriculum, instruction, um, the days and ins and outs of a school, whereas they also have the librarianship side, the management, the collection development. And in this struggle, we some to bring these two together, which I also think is the joy of being a school librarian, we get the best of both worlds. We often find that we're not considered equal partners on the educational side of things. And unfortunately, I could share more than one story I've been told from practicing school librarians about that teacher didn't consider me an equal or that administrator didn't see what I do as a valuable like a teacher. Um, but there is a great new possibility for progress in this area through the new EdTPA um, teacher preparation um, uh, instrument. So tonight I'm going to tell you a little bit about what the EdTPA is, if you're not familiar with it. Um, I'm going to tell you um, why I think it matters to educators who aren't librarians, that we that tell you what's important about why librarians are doing it, as well as why it's important for librarians who aren't educators in the schools, why they should care about this. And finally, I'll tell you what has made me successful in the EdTPA process. So next slide. So what is the EdTPA? The EdTPA stands for the Educational Teacher Performance Assessment. Um, it is an instrument developed at Stanford and is now being implemented by Pearson. Um, prior to this, most states had a portfolio process in which uh, student teachers brought all their projects together. Now that there is a, a more structured process um, where they have very specific requirements, uh, which I'll tell you a little bit about. Uh, 35 states have adopted this measure, so it's becoming extremely widespread. And its greatest advantage in my eyes is that it's um, uh, focused on the authentic learning experience and uh, the entire process. It starts with the planning of your education project, the actual teaching, and as well as the assessment at the end, assessing what you did and reflecting on how you did it. Um, there are 15 major rubrics you have to cover, so the greatest challenge with it is covering all of these different areas of teaching while you're still a novice in your student teaching experience. I should point out that new teacher candidates in subject areas must also complete this now. This is not specific to librarianship. In fact, we are doing something very similar to they are, um, just specific to our library area. So this is why I think um, K-12 educators should care that librarians are doing this process alongside them. We're, our preparation program is very parallel to theirs, and this structured experience demonstrates uh, very strongly that we are prepared to be teachers in the education world. Uh, librarians who are not uh, K-12 educators should know that school librarians um, are focusing on this reflective practice, this cycle of planning, instructing, and assessing, and I think this kind of reflective practice uh, benefits all librarians, and we should do things similar to this. So to meet the rubrics, I developed a three-lesson unit on tall tales for fourth graders. I started out with a lesson in which the students were introduced to tall tales, the characteristics, heard a story. Their second lesson, uh, I introduced them to another version of the same story so that we could talk about oral tradition and what that means for different versions of the same story. And I concluded the unit with a written assessment in which the students had to practice summarizing stories, uh, recalling from memory events of the story, and breaking it down into concrete steps in a storyboard arrangement. So what made me successful with the EdTPA process? Three major things. The first thing is collaboration. Collaboration and cooperation are your best friends in any sort of planning of instruction, whether it's in a school or outside. I could not have made my unit work had it not been for my university supervisor looking over my work without my cooperating teacher librarian giving me the wealth of her teaching experience in the library and the classroom teachers who gave me the ideas and let me know what's really important to their students in their grades. Uh, the second thing that made me successful was revising like crazy. You can't expect to write a complicated teaching document uh, to be for an external evaluator without spending significant time writing and rewriting your professional language. So I wouldn't be afraid of doing that no matter what kind of professional experience you're doing. Rewrite and re write and rewrite like crazy. And third of all, I think it's very important to have fun. Um, my only criticism of ETPA is that I think it could 
um, discourage people from entering public education. It's an intimidating process, and in some ways, it seems like a lot to do for a novice teacher. Um, the process is very similar to what national board certification is for teachers, and that's for seasoned veterans of the classroom. That being said, I think that having fun is a good way to connect with the students and help you get through the challenges. Um, I think just like students can smell fear on a, on a substitute teacher, they can tell if you're not having fun with your, what you're teaching. So even though there is this structured experience, I think it's important to find something you can get excited about and be passionate about for your students. Um, so with that, I hope that gives you an idea about what the teaching preparation process is like and um, we can all do great things in our careers. Thank you.